Hey guys, today I'm painting the Nier Ona from Rising Sun. This is a Kickstarter exclusive monster, and uh, it's a snake with a with a head. It it, it reminds me of a naga, um, but um, it it it's from an actual mythology. I think it means like a snake person or I, I don't know, snake face or something something like that. Anyway, um, I don't particularly enjoy painting snakes or nagas or anything coiled up, um, just because. I enjoy it for the most part it's fine um, but then you get to the point where it is coiled up and you have to like get inside of there with your straight brush and it doesn't really work out well and it, it's just that part is kind of more frustrating and this also has the hair as well that can get a little difficult we'll get into that later but otherwise it's actually a fairly simple paint job there's not a whole lot of paints and I mean I, I, as you can see there's only so many colors uh, mostly it's actually washes and I put a lot of effort into the base but we'll get into that in a moment. So first off, again, I always try to trim the uh, mold lines or, or flash, and this is actually really easy to get to and it cleans up really well. I was really worried about the texture. You'll see me kind of trimming on the texture later on, but um, you know, because it's round and the mold lines are always going to be pretty uh, straight, uh, they're going to go over it at some point. And the fact that it's on this kind of really prominent outturned portion, kind of unfortunate. I, I would have rather had that like in a coil somewhere, but. Otherwise, it's actually a pretty easy job trimming this. And of course, I am priming in gray. So now it is primed in gray and we're getting out cavalry brown. This is going to be the kind of the the base reddish brownish color uh, for the outside scales. Um, and uh, it's or the outside skin or, you know, wh whatever it is. Um, either way, uh, it's going to get darkened up a little bit, but yeah, this is one of my favorite colors. I really like this color. It's again, I love dark reds. I know it says brown in it, but it's, it's a very red brown, uh, a little bit darker and a little bit less brown, I think. And I would, I, it, it would be perfect in, in my eyes, but this is perfect for what we're trying to do because, uh, eventually it's going to get to where I want it. Um, so this is a good base coat here. And again, like I said, it's, it's fairly simple to paint this, like, this is similar to the Daikaiju here, where you have a dark color meeting a, a, a lighter color, and the difference between the two aren't really blended. Um, instead, there is a texture change, right? And so when it goes to those bottom scales, it, the texture changes to those scales versus the top scales, uh, as similar to the Daikaiju. And so you just kind of have to follow that. So it's very easy to do. It's not difficult at all. I'm using my regiment brush uh, for this whole thing including the, the top there and the texture's fine up there. So a, a good a good model to do that on uh, texture wise. But it does take a while because the snake is all coiled up everywhere. So we're gonna touch base again in a moment where I need to talk about something. All right, so right here, this is what I wanted to talk about. This kind of, when it's coiled up like this, and again, almost all snake miniatures have this problem where the, it's really hard to get to. It'd be a little bit easier, a little bit easier. It's a tight space no matter what, if it was off the base. But either way, it's just so hard to get your straight brush in there. You know, there aren't really any corners. I guarantee I didn't paint it all in there. I painted everything you can pretty much see. Um, but it is just very difficult to do a good job with that. So just try and take your time and 
you know, fiddle around with the angles as best you can. And next up is Averlin Sunset, and this is going to be for the bottom scales here, or the the underside of the scales. And again, this is fairly bright, um, but I'm going to be doing multiple washes on this to bring it, both shift the color and darken it a bit. Uh, and, and so one will serve one purpose, one will serve the other. And, uh, you know, it, or at least uh, more so. And again, a very easy to do paint job here. You're just, again, now tracing or painting in the lines that you didn't, you know, be before with a cavalry brown. So it's not not super difficult. It's just, uh, uh, you know, it's just time consuming. Now here, here's interesting. I'm painting in there because it's as if it's her neck. But if you notice, now I'm painting her neck. Um, I'm not sure what that is there. I, I think it's there to support the miniature. Um, because it, it has no texture. It's just flat like a post. Right, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's coming off of this upturned tail here into the head just to make sure the head doesn't wobble off or anything like that, which is fine. Now you could paint it black for the hair, uh, as if her hair is kind of, um, you know, I guess underneath her neck. And it might, I guess, hide it more because it's black and so it's all dark. I painted it like the neck and I, I think it looks great, especially from the front. It looks like because her hair's parted on the sides and not really in the back. Um, what, what you could do, um, it, it really, it only, it only breaks if you're told like, like now. So now you'll notice, or if you are kind of looking really detailed at it and you're looking at it from the front and then you turn it to the side and you happen to notice that that wasn't actually the neck that I painted. Um, and, and maybe it's supposed to be part of that tail, right? In which case it would be yellow as well. So I, again, I wasn't sure there were two points pointing it towards maybe the underside of the tail. And one point being maybe the hair, so a little difficult. And again, uh, speaking of difficult, that was difficult to decide what to paint it. This is difficult just, you know, again, because it's it's all upturned in there. And now, if you notice, I did get a smaller brush um, just to, that way I can hopefully control where it goes a little bit better. And again, this back side, this back portion is actually the easier portion. It's harder in the front. Um, just... Yeah, I, this is the part that I do, I dislike painting. I, I don't actually enjoy painting this part of really any snake. All right, so now we have Seraphim Sepia out, and this is going to mostly darken the miniature. It'll shift it a little bit, uh, or, or that Avalon Sunset, excuse me. Uh, mostly, it, it's there to darken it. It'll shift it a little bit orangish, or orangey, um, a little bit more towards orange. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, it's here to darken it. Uh, but I didn't want to do like a Nuln oil or anything like that. That wouldn't have been as smart of a choice, because this does slightly shift it kind of towards the, the orange spectrum a bit more uh, as it darkens it. All right, and then we're going to get the known oil out. I kind of like what I mentioned, but put it on the Calvary Brown because this I'm just trying, I'm trying to keep the color and just darken it. And that's exactly what this known oil, which is really just a black wash will do. It'll, it'll still be the Calvary Brown, just a lot darker.
All right, so now I have the Avalon Sunset back out again, and I'm at first I just start edge highlighting the scales, uh, which is fine. But really, what I want to do is, and, and it's a drastic highlight, first of all, is bring back the color to the Avalon Sunset. So I'm gonna actually, when I once I start speeding up the, the footage here a little bit, I'm actually gonna start painting in the almost the entire scale, just leaving the shadow of the previous scale, um, kind of at the top. And uh, this is probably the proper way to do it at first. Then afterwards, if you want to, you can then do an edge highlight on top of this. I debated on whether or not to do this. It was kind of a hard decision to or not. Um, this took a lot of time anyway, and I thought this was going to be a really quick miniature, but it ended up taking more time than I thought. Um, and I didn't want to spend an exorbitant amount of time on it. Additionally, I wanted this snake fairly dirty, um, and so I felt if I added too many crisp highlights, it'd look a little bit more clean. Um, anyway, so that, that was kind of my, my two thoughts behind not. So this is the only highlight I'm going to do on these scales. You may do the edge highlight, kind of like what you just saw before, if you want. It, it's actually pretty simple. And you'll see me make sure to get the edges, especially once these scales become a bit more defined uh, texture-wise. So uh, either way, a, a bit time-consuming. Definitely worth it, though. You want to bring that up a little bit and really get some good shadows in there. Make it look like it's actually a, you know, a snake with separate scales. All right, and now for the Calvary Brown to bring that back up, we're just gonna do a dry brush. So this texture is really good for dry brushing. It'll keep everything else uh, you know, in the recesses that darker, but this will really kind of bring up those scales. But notice that it is a very light dry brush. I'm not trying to really make it super bright here. Just give it a little bit more shine on the upturned scales. Very easy to do, very simple. Just make sure you have a small dry brush. All right, so now I have Demonic Yellow out. Uh, and so I thought about maybe just using Avalon Sunset on this as well and doing different washes, but I wanted this to fundamentally be a different yellow. So this is actually yellow without really that kind of orange yellow that the Avalon Sunset already is, or more of a mustardy yellow. Um, and then I'll, I'll still tone it down, it's really bright, but this will give it a, a very distinct look to the head. All right, so now that I have that and the other wash is done, I now have Cassandora Yellow out. Now this is going to shift the color to more of what I want, so it's already darker. Additionally, what's nice about this is now that we've already done the highlight, when you add a wash on top of that, it really helps blend it all together. Um, so it'll kind of, it because it, it makes everything a bit more tonally consistent. Um, tonally is probably the wrong word there. 
Um, is totally even a word? I'm not sure. Either way, it just kind of blends the highlight and the other wash a bit better together to where you can, uh, it, it just looks nice and smooth. And again, this is probably the, this is pretty darn close to the color on the concept art. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Okay, now I'm going to get Seraphim Sepia out and put this on the face. This is going to darken it up and kind of get some more texture on there, especially in the recesses. So that's really what I'm going for here. All right, so now we have Abaddon Black. Make sure that Seraphim Sepia is uh, dry and uh, preferably you should have put that on maybe right after the Demonic Yellow if it was dry enough, then done the Cassandora wash and then come back and put this black on. Not sure how that would have worked. Uh, either way, this is just for the recesses and then for her lips, um, for her, her like eye sockets, right? Um, and then don't worry too much about this because you're going to get the hair anyway, but it looks really funny like right now. I love how that looks. <laughs> Okay, so now we're back onto the hair, and, and now we're actually going to paint the hair in this base coat of black. Uh, again, the hair is going to be pretty dark, so this is a good base coat, but we'll, we'll highlight it back up a little bit. Now, I will say, as I said kind of at the beginning, the hair causes a little bit of issue. It just, uh, um, you know, it, 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 because of that tail going in the front there, uh, it just, it, it's kind of hard. It gets in the way, uh, which is unfortunate. It would have been easier. It would have been fine to do without the tail. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. It's there. You can't really remove it very easily. So you're just going to have to try and paint around a little bit. Okay, so now we have black gray out for a highlight, and this is going to mostly be focused on the top of the head. So again, you've seen me do this a few times. I really like how it looks, where it looks like because it's parted there, the light's shining on those curves right at the top. It makes it look really nice. Um, I'm then going to bring this one down pretty much throughout all the hair on the top strands. Uh, it, so it, it, it makes it not look as pure black, but pure black loses all definition as well so this actually now looks like hair which is also helpful Okay, then we have Uniform Gray for an extreme highlight, again focused almost exclusively on the top of the head here, or the part is. It's just a look, a style I really like. Uh, technically you could have added it to more of the curves as it goes over the, um, o over the rest of the snake. I do it in just one spot though. 
All right, now we have white gray, and this is for the rest of the face. So we're gonna put a little bit, notice I have a very tiny brush out here. It's a little tiny bit of paint. And I'm just putting this inside of the recess, not covering all the black, so there's still some black there as well. This is also gonna go on her two fangs, so she has two fangs on either side. Just be careful and paint those in too. Okay, now we're gonna follow that up with a little bit of seraphim sepia. This is to tone down the white a little bit so it's not so drastic. Otherwise it looks very much like it's kind of painted on, uh, but it's still very white. Uh, it, it just kind of blends it in a bit. And now we have dark stone out, and so now we're finally getting to the base here, uh, which I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on. So uh, first of all, I'm just painting around the snake because uh, you can usually never get the texture uh, very well uh, all the way over onto the the snake itself or the miniature itself and so I try to kind of paint around so that the color matches and this dark stone matches what I'm going to use very easily and I'm going to go ahead and paint the rim as well it needs two coats so I end up doing another coat off camera okay so now we're going to start with the Sterling Battlemire which is the thick version of Sterling Mud uh, this is just a little bit more gloopy think of it as like uh, Astro Granite versus Astro Granite Debris this would be the debris version. So you're supposed to lay it on a little bit thicker. It's a little bit thicker to begin with. The chunks are a little bit uh, heavier. And really I'm just using this to add a, a bit of difference in the, you know, the height or topography of the, the base. So it's not quite so flat. There's actually some, some big clumps of it. So I'm going to put one in the front and then one here in the back. But as you can see, I feather it out on the outside, but leave it clumpy in the middle. Alright, so now I actually have Sterling Mud out, and as you can see this is a much different consistency, but same color, same style, just much more wet, right? And this you're going to scrape a lot thinner, uh, so as you can see it pretty much matches the thinnest portion of my piles. So it just adds a little bit to, you know, you kind of change things up. You know, so it's not quite so so flat. I mean, the sterling mud would be fine on its own, and you could probably pile it up uh, a little bit, but it would look more wet um, than the the battle mire does. Okay, so here I'm showing you, I have some summer undergrowth from the Army Painter, but I'm not taking those big broccoli looking kind of pieces or vines. And they also have some battlefield rocks. Uh, instead of, they, they have a whole bunch of stuff in that battlefield undergrowth, including these little sticks that I have here that look, you know, kind of like, you know, branches or something like that. I'm putting it in here for two reasons. First of all, I want to kind of plan everything out and this will let it kind of stick there a little bit while I do. Um, but also it makes this dirty, which I also want because I want it to look kind of muddy and this is an easy way to get it done. The only thing I wish I hadn't done is perhaps stuck the, um, the, the grass on there, uh, just because it, 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 of the textured paint it came off with it and I really had to kind of clean that up so it, it laid down flat. But, uh, otherwise the rocks can stay there, um, but then you want to take everything else off. So I took everything else off now. Now I'm going onto the Nuln Oil and I'm going to cover all of this with the Nuln Oil. It, if I could do this again, I would paint the rocks first because I'm going to paint them and then add Nuln Oil. And then I would have just added Nuln Oil right onto the painted rocks and been done with it. Instead, I paint it afterwards. I then get impatient and dry brush too soon. You, you'll, you'll see. I'll, I'll talk about it. But either way, I would paint the rocks first, then do the null oil. Okay, so null oil is done, now we're going to paint the rocks. Uh, in this I'm taking uniform grey out again, and this is just to make them grey instead of uh, these brown rocks, which brown rocks are, are fine, but they're not the right brown anyway, and I wanted to spice up this this uh, base a little bit, but I didn't want to like spice it up with like a splash of color per se, so a splash of gray I think works pretty well.
Okay, so now, as you can see, I'm adding anone oil on again. Um, now, I, I'm already impatient enough to where the uniform gray is not dry all the way, and so towards the back where I ended, the known oil mixes a bit with the gray and doesn't get as deep shadows uh, as it should. Um, just plan better, don't be as impatient as me, or, you know, uh, you know, just, I guess, I guess just be, be better than I am here. Uh, this is me just, uh, thinking I can just do it real quick, and it, it works out fine. It's not terrible, but it is kind of unfortunate. Okay, so now I have this ash gray out as a dry brush. So again, now the known oil should be dry. Notice it's not. I'm just going straight to this dry brush because I'm trying to finish. Um, not because I was even rushed to finish this for YouTube. Um, I had this done pretty early. Just, uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess I was done with this miniature at this point. But either way, the ash gray does look really good on it. It really pops out that. And now we have werewolf fur, and this is for all the mud. So now we're going to do all the mud in this. This also means that you don't have to be too careful with the gray dry brush because you just cover it up in this werewolf fur. Now, this looks really good, especially under this lighting, and it does add a little bit of differences. It's not super noticeable from far away. You could do an even brighter brown for a highlight and do it very lightly to really make it pop, but I didn't want it to pop. It's supposed to be a very dark, nasty mud, um, and so it should be pretty dreary and nasty. So I'm, I'm leaving it like this, and I, 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 I love it. Okay, so uh, doing a matte varnish with this munitorium varnish or whatever. And now we're going to get those same sticks again. Notice how they're dirty. They got the texture paint on them, so that's perfect. <coughs> and I added some super glue on either side, and then I'm going to glue it down here. Okay, and so now I have that grass back out, and uh, again added a little bit of super glue on the bottom of there, and then placed them down there, pushed them down with a toothpick. Now I want to get the sterling mud back out again. Looking at this, it looked like a very clean snake sitting on top of mud, which didn't make much sense to me. So what I wanted to do was essentially dirty the bottom of the snake out a bit. Um, I wish I had noticed this before, but again, before the base, I, I, I didn't really envision the how clean the snake would look, how separate from the basing it would look. It didn't really fit. Uh, the snake should have been slithering around in the mud. Um, so I'm just adding a little bit here. Uh, it would have been better to do before. It would have gone the matte varnish. I don't re-varnish it. Um, though it's just some texture pin in the bottom. It's fine. Um, and it makes it a little bit dip more difficult when I dry brush it like right now with the werewolf fur. I could have also probably done the known oil um, all at the same time when I first did the known oil. If I was really planning things out. I didn't want to add the oil before afterwards because I think it, it wouldn't have gone on well. I think it would have messed it up a bit. All right, but that's it. Here is the Nier Ona from Rising Sun. I think it turned out pretty well. I'm very happy with it. Uh, again, a little frustrating in those uh, little recesses, but otherwise super happy with the base, happy with how the miniature turned out. I think it turned out pretty cool. Uh, I think at least. It, it seems pretty neat to me. Um, kind of that that neck portion was a little unfortunate. Uh, it, again, I, I flip flop on whether I should have painted it black or not. Uh, but either way, um, pretty pretty cool miniature. Pretty happy with it. And I hope that you guys like it too. Again, this is a Kickstarter exclusive, so this won't come in the base game or the core box or the monster pack that you can get as well. Um, but, you know, it's also kind of just a snake. It's not, you're not missing, you know, something super exciting, but it does look pretty cool painted, I think. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I want to thank all of my patrons. You can see them listed here. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you.